My first film study video of the week is going to be specific and focused on former Maryland wide receivers Dante Demas and Raheem Jarrett. Uh, two guys had big impact in the Ravens Bucks week three preseason game for their respective teams. Both of them trying to stake a claim to to making an NFL roster, whether it's in Baltimore or Tampa Bay. They're a pair of undrafted free agents, but they on eight targets they combined for six catches, 134 yards. Uh, in the Bucks 26-20 win on Saturday night. I'm a big Maryland fan, obviously being from Maryland, and I wanted to highlight these guys and show what they're capable of. And first we'll talk about Jarrett, a former, I believe, five, five-star recruit to Maryland, now trying to prove that he belongs in the NFL, uh, in this case with the Tampa Bay Bucks. Looking at the film from Saturday night, and, and this is my only look at Jarrett from a, you know in-depth perspective. And in the case of Demas, I've seen all three preseason games, so it's a little more, you know, widespread knowledge of how he's doing but Jarrett's balanced enough to help an NFL roster strong at the catch point really strong upper body strength if you ask me both of these guys I feel like play through contact well now two of Jarrett's catches are going to be quite easy in this uh this film study video to be honest with you he, he makes in the preseason so far he's made plays all over the field for the Bucks. Uh, the first one we'll show you I think is going to be one of the main elements of the Tampa Bay offense I watched uh, to watch the game Saturday night I was listening to a Buck stream and Rondé Barber. I was watching the Buck stream, I should say, and Rondé Barber was commenting about how this is going to be one of the main concepts for them in terms of play action. Not necessarily to fake toss to one side, but getting Baker Mayfield some some space to operate with. In this case, it's just your classic over concept. It's going to be a fake fake toss to the top side, right side, and you're going to get one receiver going in motion to get out of there. Second receiver, you know, just basically running a clear out. Jarrett running the over concept o- over top of the linebacker level in front of the DB level, in front of the safeties, if you will. Somewhat easy catch from the NFL. It doesn't get much easier than this in terms of being open, even though he's got to secure the football and take a big hit from Geno Stone as soon as he catches it. One guy that uh, he's probably in competition with, or potentially to either make the roster or get on the field, Trey Palmer, a rookie from Nebraska, makes the probably the highlight real play of the night. Uh, jumping over Ravens inside linebacker Delshawn Phillips. I don't think this one was intended for Palmer. Again, Rondé Barber on the stream, you know, made that quite clear. I think this ball was intended for the receiver um, in the slot. I think it's intended for this guy right here. And Delshawn Phillips is going to turn and uh, turn underneath, back turned, and Trey Palmer just goes up. Perfect timing to go up and stab the ball in midair. Insane leaping catch, if you ask me. Um, you know, Trey Palmer's super talented, and in the case of Raheem Jarrett, he's probably, you know, got to beat that guy out or at least, you know, be more consistent than Palmer, who did have a, a muffed punt. In the case of Demas, one of the guys he's probably in competition with for, you know, maybe a practice squad spot or whatever is uh, Sean Ryan's, another undrafted free agent, had a real impressive week one against the Eagles. Just a little, like, kind of stutter go, wide open, Anthony Brown delivers it, drop. Everyone that's a Ravens fan was super surprised because of how well he had caught the ball in that week one game against the Eagles. Again, he's down here at the bottom side of the screen. A much better player than this and a, a weird moment for him. But in the case of Demas trying to make the roster or, or be a, uh, a practice squad guy that's developed for a year, could have helped him out. Let's get back to the film of, of Jarrett and Demas again. Uh, now, now, look, I have looked at some film of, of Jarrett from week one and two of the preseason, to be honest with you, but I'm just focusing this film study on this. He's comfortable in every part of the field. In the case of this play, it's very similar to the first one I showed you, except that it's just a, it's a beautiful throw by Kyle Trask um, over the top of the linebacker level. Very similar conceptually to the one that I showed you the uh, first time. You got a, a run action by the running back to the right side, quarterback going to boot opposite of it. And you got your over concept. Jarrett almost gets the first down. Really nice throw over top of Kyle Harris. I mean, um, Malik Harrison. Jarrett's able to catch it. It looks like fingerprint or fingertips with one hand and uh, nearly get a first down. Very similar route to the one that he had to catch on earlier. He did have one missed opportunity, if you ask me. He's down here at the bottom side of the screen. I think second quarter, but I might be wrong. It might be third. Um, I, I don't think he accelerates to fourth or fifth gear around about now, again, he's down here at the bottom side. I'll let this show a couple of times. Ball ends up being looking, you know, overthrown by the quarterback. But if you go back and watch the route, I'll let it run through two times. 
I think Jared, Jared clearly has more speed than this. Uh, he just, for whatever reason, didn't accelerate to his fourth or fifth gear somewhere around here. Yeah, there's contact by the DB, but he wasn't running, and I believe if he had been running, he would have had an opportunity to make an even bigger play and kind of um, stake his claim even more to, to get in a roster spot or getting on the practice squad if he's unable to get on the roster. But you guys let me know what you think, especially if you're Bucks fans or, or, or Terps fans and you're like me and you're root, you know, I'm a Ravens fan, but I'm, I'm rooting for Jarrett and Demas to both make plays, um, especially since it's a preseason game. All right, Demas lined up in the slot a lot, made two spectacular plays on deep balls. It's almost like he just ignores contact or it just doesn't bother him much because he's so big and strong. Lined up in the slot multiple times, like I said, and showed the potential that we all witnessed while he was at Maryland, you know, particularly before a knee injury in October of 2021, I think in a game against Iowa. Uh, just going up top here, guy underneath of him, guy over top, semi-roll concept uh, where you got the tight end kind of pinning down. Anthony Brown is a guy who, in most cases, is going to throw the football. He's going to try to make a play, and in this case, beautiful throw to Dante Demas. I mean, the end zone angle, I think, looks spectacular. Demas off screen to our left, obviously. Like a, like a semi-roll smash concept, pinned down by the tight end on the on the offense's right, the left-hand side of our screen. And I'll pause it at the catch point for Demas. Some you know, some of these guys that that aren't gonna make the roster for maybe the Ravens or the Bucks or whatever team, they're they're putting film out there of what they can do for other people to watch. And Dante Demas was a guy, barring that knee injury in 2021, the year before he declared, you know, I don't think he goes, I don't think he goes undrafted, in my opinion. I just think he's super talented. His lone missed opportunity, again, in the slot on the left, looks like a hold to me on the DB. The slot DB, uh, I think, grabs early here and then grabs as the ball's on its way and pulls down. Now, he kind of plays it off unintentionally. He being the DB kind of plays it off unintentionally because he's falling down, making a play on the ball, so it doesn't look like he's necessarily grabbing Demas. I think he is. You'd like to see Demas get that opportunity back because he's so big and strong, maybe be able to make a play on the ball and, and draw the flag. But for me, you know, again, I'm a Demas and a Jarrett fan, Maryland fan, but he looks like he's pretty clearly held here. But you're certainly going to see that physical coverage in the NFL, and I, I think he'd like to have this one back to at least make a play on the ball and not be impeded so much, um, I almost want to say so easily, by the DB. And again, you can see that this over route concept is um, integral to the Bucks' offense off the play-action boot. It's just going to be what the Bucks do. Uh, they got Rashad White, and, and they're going to utilize him a lot and try to get Baker Mayfield space. Jarrett showed in this game that you know that concept is something he's going to get open on, but let's be honest. It's not a super difficult concept. It is his third catch on this concept, let's be real. Uh, I think I missed his fourth catch in this game. I will say this. He's, he seems to be really good at knowing when to gear down and just kind of hold into some open space to give him space to run onto. He's not 100, 110% speed the entire time and catching this ball too far near the sideline where he can't turn he kind of, to me, gears down here intentionally. He's probably been coached to do so, so that he can catch this ball on the run and turn and go, and he doesn't end up so close to the sideline. Hopefully I said that in a way that makes sense. So even though he's wide open, there's still a little bit of a, a, a skill to it. All right, in the uh, slot left down here, third and seven, third and eight, the pocket collapses in this empty formation before Jarrett or, or anyone else can become available. It's a nice little um, pick scheme by the Ravens D tackles. I think it's Bots, Bots the third. I believe he's a new pickup for the Ravens who um, ends up getting the sack. You can see there's no, there, there's really no receivers who've made themselves available until they get it, they're getting to the goal line. And at that point, it's just too late to pick concept. One of the D tackles was able to screen uh, an offensive lineman and Bots was able to fold over the top. This is him right here getting the easy sack. All right, later in the game, probably the play of the night. Um, I think it says a lot about Demas, his awareness. Um, at least for me, I, I see signs, markers, that he's super aware and he'll adjust quickly. Insane throw across his body by Anthony Brown. If you're, if you're a Ravens fan, you know this to be true. Anthony Brown's going to give his receivers chances to make plays. Uh, if you're a Bucks fan or a Maryland fan watching it who doesn't know much about Anthony Brown, uh, you may not know that. He's a little bit of a gunslinger. But look, Demas is on, in on the slot left, and him and uh, Vokalek on the right are both going to kind of run these in cuts. 
Watch how quickly Demas starts to adjust when he recognizes, oh, if the ball was coming to me, it would already be here. Therefore, the ball's not. Quarterback still has the ball. Let me adjust. I'm just comparing him to Vokalek and the quickness with which he adjusted to go long. In a scramble drill, you know, somebody, if you went long, you're going to come back to the football. If you went short or medium, you know, you're going to go deep. He does this perfectly, and I just think this speaks to He's a playmaker. I mean, he's just a playmaker. I think both of these guys are. Um, I would like to see Demas get more opportunities, but on this Ravens team, even in the preseason, there's so many guys out there who who are talented and are trying to make the, the squad. Uh, Demas had few and few opportunities leading up to Saturday night. Thankfully, he took advantage of these. Uh, I think his ability to adjust and make plays down the field is unique for the guys that are on the level that he's at in terms of you know trying to actually make the roster or be on the practice squad. End zone angle of the same huge catch. Uh, like I said, Ethan Brown's a gun slinger. I don't think we're handling stuff well on the left side here at all. Um, Saturday night, to be real. But um, Anthony Brown's going to turn the ball over some, no doubt. He ha- he turned the ball over three times in a wild card loss last – or excuse me, in a week 18 loss last year at the Bengals, one of the best defenses in the league. But – He's also going to give his guys chances to make plays. Um, it's not a popular opinion, but I like Anthony Brown. I don't you know, think he has a place on this Ravens roster. I think that's clear. But I like the fact that he doesn't yet know that he shouldn't do some of the things he does. Now, you know, I'm not saying he shouldn't throw this ball, but Anthony Brown's a guy who's going to take chances. Somebody compared him to Jameis Winston. I never would have thought of that. It's a fantastic comparison, if you ask me. Uh, Demas is a guy who can take advantage of a quarterback like that, meaning a quarterback that's going to give his guys chances to make plays. Demas can take advantage. I think he's a playmaker. I think both of these guys are. I think Demas offers a little bit more in terms of uh, going up over the ball, to going up over people to get the football. This is fourth down to end the game. It's going to be a sack by, I think, number 48 off the left side. He's just going to win, clear win versus the uh, left tackle. But a cool stunt if you ask me, by um, Tampa Bay. They got three over here and then one on the right versus Ben Cleveland. So he's just going to basically get to the inside shoulder of Ben Cleveland. 79 is going to cross face of the center, engage the guard, and then late loop around. This is one of the things I've tried to talk about multiple times, and maybe I don't explain it very well. But to me, this is a hard-coded outside rush for 48 because they're trying to force the quarterback for whatever reason, to the right. You don't always want to force the quarterback to the left. I'm not sure why, but I think this is a hard-coded outside pass rush for 48 and a stunt on the other side that's designed to complement it. You can see the way that it worked out. 33, the edge rusher, is engaging the inside of Ben Cleveland. This guy who was lined up on the other side of the football looped all the way around after engaging the guard, and you can see he is free to get to Anthony Brown, and then the backside guy, nobody's open. It's, It's kind of similar to... The third down play that I showed you by the Bucks, where none of their receivers were really available. None of those guys was available at all until the goal line, even though it was third and eight, and I think they had another six yards they could work with. In this case, it's just a nice job in coverage by the Bucks. Demas is not on the field. You know, that was the I digressed a little bit here, but um some of these little elements I, I like to notice when I I like to point out to you guys when I notice them. And um just, just try to give you a, an overall comprehensive look at parts of the game that maybe people don't talk about some of the D-line stunts and some of the coverages. Look, let me know what you think of um, Dante Demas and Raheem Jarrett, two guys, you know, big reputations coming out of uh, Maryland and two guys that took advantage of their opportunities in the week three preseason game. The, the Bucks went out there and played their starters on offense and I think in, in a lot of cases on defense to start the game. The Ravens went the other route. Gave guys like Demas um, more opportunities, and they took advantage of it. I'm rooting for both of these guys to to stick around in the NFL building in whatever capacity and, and keep their careers pointed forward because they're guys that made it fun to watch Maryland games at College Park in person or on TV, and they're guys that I've heard talk, speak about, talk about. I've heard other people speak about their um, impact on the team, particularly at Maryland, and they just sound like guys that, you know, 
are success, are going to be successes in the NFL. Love guys, let me know what you think of the breakdown, what you think of the video. If you think other Ravens, Bucks, or, or Maryland Terps fans would enjoy this content, please consider grabbing a link to this video, sharing it somewhere on social, social media to help this content get more reach.